Hey guys, it's Matt with bleepinjeep.com. Today I want to go over six oil filters that AutoZone carries. We're going to cut them open, see which one is best. Alright, so let's take a look at our selection here. I went to my local AutoZone. These were all the filters that they had uh, in the book. There were probably three more, but they weren't in the book. I figured nobody was going to buy those anyway. So first up we have the STP, then we have the X STP uh, Extra Large, and then we've got the Mobile One, we've got the KNN, we've got the Fram Extra Guard. At my AutoZone that's all they were carrying was the Fram Extra Guard. Um, and then they have the, uh, we have the Bosch filter. So the first thing we need to do is cut them open and uh, let's go over and do that real quick. Okay, so we've got all of the filters cut open and I actually found a few surprising results there, for me at least, maybe not for you. The first thing that we need to look at though is how an oil filter works and all of the parts. So the first thing that we have, let's take this one as an example, we have the filter housing. Then we have this coil spring, basically this coil spring just uh, pushes pressure so that you're not going to have any leaks coming around uh, from the seal on the opposite side. Then you've got um, your end caps here. These are your stamped end, end caps. Some of them are steel, some of them are paper, uh, some of them are like a cardboard type material. Then you've got your synthetic media. This is where the oil flows through. Now some of these will have a bypass valve and some of them won't. What that does is if you go too long, let's say you went 10,000 or 20,000 miles without changing this filter, this would get clogged up and instead of keeping oil from getting to your engine at all, uh, there would be so much pressure that this bypass valve would open and let the oil come through unfiltered. And then we've got uh, this base plate right here. These are the holes that the oil filter uh, goes in and then comes out of right there. And then you've got your seal of course or your gasket. And then you have this which is a silicone anti-drain back valve. I say silicone. Uh, this one is silicone, I believe, but some of them might not be. But uh, basically what that does is whenever your uh, engine is turned off, it keeps the oil from draining out of, out of here. Let's say that it's sitting upright like this. You turn the engine off. You don't want the oil draining out of there because when you start it back up, then it would take a while before that uh, oil to get back up into your engine if this was completely empty. So that is all the parts of the oil filters. Now let's take a look at each of them individually. Okay, now let's take a look at these individually in no particular order starting with the STP. Uh, I don't want to take too much time on this. I'll show you the chart at the end. Um, otherwise it might get pretty boring. But uh, let's just show you what we're looking for. The first thing that we're looking for is this gasket right here. You want that to be a nice uh, gasket. Then you're looking for a heavy duty base plate. This one is uh, pretty firm, it's heavy duty. It's got these big holes on the front, but it does have this diffuser on the back. I'm not real sure about that. If you're looking for a silicone drain back valve. Uh, so I can't tell if that's silicone or not, it probably is. Um, then you're looking at uh, the center tube, the stamped end caps, which this doesn't have one. This one has like a paper end cap, some kind of paper, and there's no metal in here. This is plastic on the inside. So they're trying to save money there. Um, then you're looking at your spring. You're also looking for a bypass valve, which this one doesn't have a bypass valve. So if it gets clogged up, uh, it's just going to get clogged up. There's no bypass valve in there. And then you're looking at the, um, the coil spring or the leaf spring. And that one is it there. And then you're looking for the filter housing, whether it's strong. This one uh, is not the weakest that I found, but it's definitely not the strongest either. Let's move on. Okay, so that was the STP. This is the STP XL. Another thing I want to show you is what we're looking for is these pleats. You want these pleats to be nice 
and uniform. You don't want to have some really big pleats and some really small pleats, otherwise the oil will be forced to go through the one with the big pleats and clog that up faster. So uh, this XL, um, it's got the, the nicer coil spring instead of that leaf spring thing. It's got a, uh, a valve on the top here, which is nice, and it's got the metal, which is nice. The uh, filter element looks pretty strong compared to uh, this one. Let's take a look. Oh, they're about the same. They're a little bit different ma material. This one is a little bit taller on the XL. Uh, it does say XL, but it's really not any larger than the other ones, I don't think. Pretty much the same size. It's just larger than the uh, standard STP one. So here we have the uh, this little guy, the bypass valve, and then we have a heavy-duty housing. This one came with the uh, cover, so you, you, it's not going to get uh, dirty or water inside there. And then you've got a little bit nicer uh, O-ring on this one, um, or a gasket, I should say. And this one looks like it's made of silicone, whereas uh, the one before looked like it was some kind of uh, gasket material. This one is silicone. Uh, will will do better in the heat. And then in these holes right here, they go straight through instead of having a diffuser. And I would say that this can is a little bit stronger maybe, if not exactly the same. So there is the STP XL. Okay, moving on. This one is the Mobile One. The box says it has high capacity, three times more capacity. Let's take a look on the inside here. This one has the little leaf spring thing. Can is pretty strong. This one has a different kind of a bypass valve uh, down here instead of up at the top. I guess that still works. It's just a different method of doing it. Um, I forgot to look at the bottom here. This one didn't have the cover over the bottom. This uh, O-ring, or the gasket, is actually uh, stamped in there so that you can't really pull it out easily. It doesn't look like it's silicone, though. This valve, uh, I'm going to say that is not silicone. That looks like some kind of latex rubber, so that uh, is probably a minus. Okay, everything else looks good. The pleats look okay. Although they don't look like it would be three times the capacity, it looks like the pleats are the same size as the uh, standard STP. So, uh, not sure where they're getting the 3x capacity, but uh, everything else looks good. It's uh, made out of metal, and uh, this is pretty heavy duty. So, there is the Mobile One. Now, uh, there's a lot of other things to consider at the end. I'll make a chart. Like I said, we'll do the prices as well. And I'm going to count up these pleats and a few other things. So stay tuned for that. All right, next up is the K&N. You'll notice first off the bat that there is like a wrench on the top here. So you can get a crescent wrench and get that off without it getting stuck. So there's a plus for that. Now the housing, I think this is probably the thickest housing that I've seen so far does have that leaf spring thing in there, which I don't really like. I did like the spring from uh, this STP Plus. Okay, here is the uh, the pleating. I'll count these a little bit later, but here is one negative. As you can see, some of these pleats are small, and then they get larger, and then they get smaller, and you'll see there's going to be a lot of oil being pressed down in there and clogging that up faster. Is that a a bad thing? I'm not sure. But uh, it does have the bypass valve on this inside of this thing. Um, it's made out of metal. Now it came with the uh, the little cover to keep the dust and water out or whatever. Here's a little plus. It came with this, uh, this little thing so you can put on your window. And here is a silicone. I can definitely tell that that one is silicone for that uh, bypass valve. No, I can't get it off. Holes are a little bit smaller, but they do go straight through. It's definitely big and hefty. And this uh, gasket is the thickest of all the gaskets. I'm not sure what that does or if that makes a difference, but I can tell it feels like silicone too. So there's a plus for that. Now the negative is going to be the price of this. I'll show you that later in the chart.
The other thing I noticed too is that uh, there's not a whole lot of cleat there compared to something like this one. The uh, cleats are just a little bit taller on this uh, STP XL and let's take a look at the regular STP. It's going to be about the same size as the regular STP. Okay, moving on. Next filter up is the Fram filter. Now this is kind of where my mind was blown right here. Now it does have the grip uh, textured surface, which is kind of cool. Uh, kind of like the wrench over here that lets you get it off easily. But let's open it up and uh, you can see I was kind of surprised right here. I don't know what that is, but to me that looks like mold. It's uh, some kind of a paper material. So there's no metal inside this one. There is not a lot of pleat material in there. Um, so there, it's a lot smaller. It actually, some of the other ones I could hardly get it out of there, but this one, you can see there's a lot of uh, material that could be shoved in there a little more. There's a little tiny uh, thin piece of metal on the inside there. So that is the filter. The bypass valve is actually on the spring which is kind of weird. Um, it probably works, but I'd be afraid that oil would get between this spring and that paper filter. Um, so let's take a look at this. Here we've got uh, a silicone um, anti-drain back valve, so that's good. And the bottom, it's got some holes. Those are probably um, the same size as the smaller holes that we've seen. The uh, gasket uh, that doesn't look like silicone, it looks like some kind of gasket material, uh, but it is kind of hefty. So, I don't know if this is just recycled material that they're using, or if that's mold or dirt, or what's going on there, but that was kind of what surprised me on this uh, Fram Extra Guard. Now this is the Fram Extra Guard too, remember you're paying money, extra money for the Extra Guard. Uh, like I said, they were not selling the regular Fram uh, at the uh, AutoZone that I went to. Okay, one more thing I forgot to mention about this Fram filter. This was the thinnest cover that I found. It actually bent while I was trying to cut it. Uh, it was so thin that it started bending the edges whenever the saw would go through or wouldn't go through and it would just bend the, the Fram filter. All right, so the next filter in our lineup is the Bosch filter. Now this one kind of surprised me too. Let's open it up. Now this one, I would say it wasn't quite as thin as the Fram filter, but it was still very thin. You can see how thin that is compared to, like say the K&N. I would say this was the thickest filter. I can't even really deform that. Okay, so. This has the uh, spring thing on top. It's got a really cool looking uh, bypass valve right there. It's got metal on the top and bottom. But here is the weird thing, and I don't know if that's supposed to be like that or not, but there is a string actually tied around the filter material. Is that supposed to be there? Is that not supposed to be there? I would think it's not supposed to be there, but I really have no idea. If that string came loose, and then this uh, bypass valve opened, you'd get a string down in your engine. Another thing that kind of surprised me is when I opened it up, this was all dirty. It's like uh, there's some kind of like dirt on there. You can see that it's actually scraping off on my fingernails. And that wasn't me that put that dirt in there. That was in there as soon as I cut it open. All right, so the pleats, they look pretty strong. Some of them are wider than others. Uh, but it looks like there's quite a lot of pleats in there. It's got a nice uh, silicone o-ring, or not o-ring, but uh, valve in there. And it's got straight through holes on the bottom here. It's got uh, this, which looks like a silicone gasket for the bottom. And what else? This is nice and thick uh, bottom plate here. So that's the Bosch premium oil filter for, uh, and these are all the same uh, for all the same vehicle. So, 
Let's uh, take a look at all of these in depth and look at the chart and uh, we'll try to pick a winner. Alright, I've laid everything out in nice solid rows so that you can see everything that comes with these filters. There's a lot of differences here. You can see some of them have a lot of pleatage, some of them don't, some of them have strong cans, some of them are thin. Some of them have uh, silicone uh, based uh, gaskets and seals, some of them do not. Um, some of them have the coil springs, the leaf springs, and some of them have plastic covers. So let's make a chart now and, uh, and we will show you every single thing that these have and do not have and we'll see if we can come up with some kind of point system. Okay, here is our chart. Let's go over the talking points here. We've got price up at the top. That's going to be subjective. Can strength, pleats, steel end caps, steel tube in the middle, the base plate holes, the bypass valve, the plastic cover, the uh, silicone gasket, the spring, the silicone valve, the uh, grip, and the extras, if any. All right, so let's start off with the can strength. We'll come back to price here in a minute. So the can strength, uh, I'm gonna say the K&N was strong. The Fram was definitely the weakest. So for can strength, I'm gonna give the K&N two points. We're gonna give the uh, Fram X zero points. There was one other thin one. I think that was the Bosch one. We'll give that zero points too. And uh, the STP, uh, the first one here, that was uh, pretty pretty uh, thin too. So other ones, we're going to give those the XL and the Mobile One. We'll give those one point each. All right, so for the pleats, now there's different heights on these pleats. So if you'll notice, this uh, STP XL had the tallest pleats, followed by the Fram uh, Extra Guard, but the Fram Extra Guard had very little pleats. So what I did was I counted all the pleats. So uh, for the STP, there's 58. The XL, there's 75 plus it's tall. There's the Mobile One with 66. The k and with 54. The Fram Extra Guard, 36, dismal, 36. The Bosch, 70. Okay, so let's give these things some points. Um, Fram X, definitely gonna be like a zero. I wonder if I can give negative points, maybe. Uh, what's the next one? I'm gonna say the STP over here. I'm gonna give that zero points, too. And then let's give, uh, let's give this one one point. One point, one point, and I'm gonna give this one two points because it's got the most pleats and it's got the extra height for the STP XL. Okay, next one, steel end caps. As you know, some of these had uh, steel caps on the top. Some of them were just this cardboard type stuff. So let's uh, add up some points here. For the, uh, for the steel end caps, we're going to give uh, Oh, I've got them already checked here, so we've got, uh, let's do uh, one point for a steel end cap. Let's do that here, 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 and here. So the, uh, the STP XL had a steel, Mobile One steel, K&N steel, the Bosch had a steel end cap, the Fram X. Uh, this is the one that had mold or something. I'm going to give that, that definitely deserves a minus one, and then we'll give the STP a one for its little paper end caps. Okay, steel tubes in the middle. Definitely no points here for the uh, STP. And then we're going to give uh, everybody else one point because they were all pretty similar. Besides, uh, one of these was kind of flimsy. There it is. That's the uh, that's the Fram Extra Guard filter. Had kind of a tin can feel, but uh, I really doubt that matters, so I'm still going to give them one point. Okay, base plate holes. I organized these into um, large and medium holes and then questionable. 
So uh, there's some of these had different size holes. Some of them had more holes than others. And then uh, I think it was just this one, the STP blue one, that had it had large holes, but then it had small holes on the back. So I'm not sure what's going on there. So we're going to give, uh, let's give two points for our large holes, two points, and then one point for medium holes, and uh, zero points for questionable holes. Bypass valve. Now that, uh, that's this little valve here. Whenever the oil pressure gets too high, it bypasses the filter. Some of them had it, some of them didn't. Uh, the uh, STP, the blue one, was the only one that did not have a bypass valve. I'm going to give that a negative one point. And uh, all the others, uh, some of them were different. I'm going to give this uh, Fram X, um, I guess it's still a bypass valve, but it's weirder than all the others. But I'll still give them all uh, one point. Okay, plastic cover. There was only two, the STP XL and the KNN filter that had this little plastic cover. Now, you might not think that's a big deal, but uh, if this gets in a wet environment, like in my shop here, uh, before it was insulated, uh, the, the cardboard, it was so humid in here that the cardboard would just dissolve. Now you can imagine that the paper filter is gonna get moisture in it too. So having that, uh, plastic on there is probably a good idea because you don't know where it came from in the truck too even if you're keeping it in your garage so I'm gonna give uh, give a one point extra for that plastic cover and zero points for no plastic cover silicone gasket uh, that's this piece right here some of these were silicone some of them were just gasket material so I'm gonna give uh, one point for gas for silicone, zero points for no silicone, and uh, zero points for questionable. One of them, uh, the Bosch, I'm not sure if it's silicone or not, but if it is silicone, it's very rough silicone. Okay, so the spring. Um, some of these had coil springs. One of them only had the coil spring. I, I like that idea better than this funky spring. So let's give uh, zero points for those uh, funky springs and we'll give one point for the coil spring. Silicon, silicone valve. Uh, that is this guy right here. All of these were silicone except for one. Uh, the mobile one had this valve right here and uh, you can smell that that is uh, latex rubber it's not going to withstand the heat so I'm going to give that uh, that's kind of weird because all these others were were silicone so that one the mobile one we're going to give one point to everyone that had silicone valve and negative one points for mobile one right yep just making sure or no silicone valve. All right, grip. There was only two that had some sort of grip so that you would easily be able to get these off. That's the Fram. I think that's why uh, these are so popular is because it has that grip and I really do like that grip. So we're gonna give that, uh, let's give that two points. Oh, wrong one. Let's give that one two points and we're gonna give the uh, K&N though. The K&N has a wrench. Uh, so let's give that three points because that was that's a good idea. Okay, extras. There was only one that had an extra, and I'm calling this an extra as minimal as that is. It is an extra, so we give the point to the K and N. The rest get nil on those extras. Okay, I'm gonna add these up real quick. We'll get back with you on the totals here and then we'll look at the price. Alright let's do some math here and figure out which one is best regardless of price. Then we'll look at price here in a minute. So for the STP we've got 1 minus 1 plus 1 so we get 1 point. 
For the STP XL, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 points. For the mobile one, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, minus 1, 5 points. Come on, marker. 5 points. For the K and N, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 points for the KNN. For the, uh, which one is next? For MX Dragard, we've got a negative 1 plus 1. That cancels out, so we've got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 points for that one. And for the Bosch, uh, to be fair, I uh, added a 0 here because of that little string that we found in there, so I subtracted a point. So for the Bosch, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six points for the Bosch. So what does that tell us? That tells us that if money is no object to you out of these six filters that I found at AutoZone, the clear winner is K&N, followed by the STP XL, followed by the Bosch, then Fram X and the Mobile One, are tied for last and then the blue STP filter is in dead last. But I'm not going to end it right there because I want to factor in some prices. So what do we do there? We know that the STP was three dollars and seventy cents. The STP XL was nine dollars. The Mobile One filter is thirteen dollars. The K&N filter fourteen dollars. The Fram X four twenty and the Bosch comes in at seven dollars. So how are we going to figure this? I know I'm going to get a lot of hate here because this is very subjective but uh, let's figure let's give the lowest price filter the highest points. So let's uh, we've got six filters here let's just go ahead and give the STP six points that was the cheapest followed by five for the Fram X and then the next one would be, uh, let's see, the Bosch. So let's give that four points. And then the STP XL gets three points. The Mobile One gets two points. And the K&N gets one point. Now let's add those in to the points that we already have down here. So uh, one plus six equals seven points for the STP. 12 plus 3 is, uh, what is that, 15 points for the STP XL. Mobile 1 gets 5 plus 2, that's 7. So we get 7 points for that one. The KNN gets 14 plus 1, that's 15 points for the KNN filter. The Fram Extra Guard gets 10 points. And the Bosch gets 10 points as well. All right, so when we factor in price, what do we come up with? Well, we come up with a tie for first, a tie for second, and a tie for third. So if you factor in price the way I did it here, which there's a numerous ways you could do it, uh, you know, you're never going to get uh, anybody that agrees on that. But doing it the way I did it here, you are tied for first with the K and N and the STP XL. Now the STP XL is uh, $9 compared to the K&N $14. So it really depends on how much you want to pay there. Coming in second is the Bosch and the Fram X. Now that's kind of odd since the Fram X got so little points in the beginning but it is so cheap that it kind of makes up for it. So I'm not saying that uh, you should buy that over the others but uh, if you add up the points, that's what you get, tie for second. And the tie for third would be the STP and the Mobile One. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I did. I think that was fun digging into these and seeing what was inside these filters. Uh, do subscribe because we do this stuff all the time here on Bleepin' Jeep. And uh, check out our store, bleepinjeep.com slash store. You can find t-shirts like this and we've got a bunch more for you there. Hit the thumbs up, 
leave your comments down below. If you want to see me do this at another store, say uh, O'Reilly's, Pep Boys, whatever, I'm sure they have a different selection of filters and we can do that, find a winner over there. And then uh, we'll see how it goes. Let me know what you think. I'm still a little curious as to why there's a string in that filter. If you know, let me know. Thanks for watching. Bye. Wonder if I could take the best component of each filter and weld it back together. Hmm.